So if we're convinced that association is linear, then the regression line provides the best um, numerical summary of the relationship. That is, if you look, if it looks like a line can go through it, the next thing to do is draw a line through it. But the question is, how do you figure out what's the best line? You know, what's the best way of drawing a line through your points? Well, a common way to explain the strength of a linear fit is with, is with what's called the coefficient of determination, which is abbreviated R squared. And that's literally the correlation squared. And this, what this does is it describes the amount of variation in your Y values in your response variables that can be explained by your X values. So it's how much of the Y values can be explained by your X values, or how much of the variation in your Y values can be explained by your X values. Now, the correlation is always between negative one and positive one. So if you square those numbers, that's always going to give you a value that's between zero and one. So, and while it doesn't, it's not always, often R squared is written as a percent. So if you end up with 100%, what that means is that you can draw a line through every single point of your scatter plot. So a value of 100% means the relationship is perfectly linear and the regression line perfectly predicts observations. So whatever X value you picked, you can pick the Y value perfectly. You can predict the Y value perfectly. A value of 0% means there is no linear relationship and the regression line is not a good fit. It will do a very poor job. That means whatever X value you pick, your prediction for the Y value is you know, pointless. So one example, suppose the correlation between X and Y is 0.7947. Now, point seven, uh, what? Whoops, <laughs> try that again. 0.7947 squared comes out to be about 0.6315, so about 63.2%. Again, what does this mean? Well, essentially, whatever X, uh, you know, the variation in your X values, as you pick different X values, 63.2% of the variation in the Y values, you know, in terms of how much the Y values change, can be explained by those X values. Um, for another example, this is one I created a while ago. Uh, and this is based off of 84 students that took the final. And what I have is the, the Y values were the, their final grade, the overall percentage. Now for this graph, the X value was just their exam one score. And you can see that exam one really doesn't predict a lot about the overall grade. I mean, it does somewhat. But R squared is 0.43, which means there are a lot of other things that were used to predict the grade as well. Now, if I include exam two, so if I take exam one and exam two and average them out and use that to predict the grade, you can see that the coefficient determination is now going up to 67%. And my predictions look, and my graph looks a lot more linear. Now, if I take all the average of all three exams, now my correlation coefficient is 80%. If I include the final exam, I'm up to 92%. I add the homework, I'm now up to 97%. So I can almost perfectly predict someone's grades based off of the exam's final and homework. And in terms of why it's not perfect 100%, well, as I do with every quarter, um, I'll replace your worst ex um, exam score with your final if it helps. And once I did that, I'm now perfectly, uh, I have a perfect coefficient determination. All right, so let's do a couple calculations and that'll be it for this lesson. If a linear model has a correlation of negative 0.87, how much of the variation in the response is explained by the expansionary variable? Well, what's being asked is to find the correlation or uh, the coefficient of determination. So that's going to be negative 0.87 squared. I'll put the negative in parentheses. But if you want to figure out the variation of the response explained by expanded variable, that's R squared. So R squared is negative 0.87 squared, about 75.7%.
On the other hand, if a linear model has a strong negative relationship, and that's going to be important. The, um, this is saying the correlation is negative. We know the coefficient determination is 0.48. So what is the correlation coefficient? Well, if you know R squared is 0.48, you can find the correlation by taking the square root and I get 0 0.693. However, if that's what you put on the homework or exams, that's not going to be marked correct. What's missing again is that um, what we said at the beginning, the coefficient, the correlation coefficient is negative. There's a negative relationship. So the actual answer should have been negative 0.693. Oops. Should be negative right there.